So I drive a Tesla. Show off. I get some flack for it sometimes, but honestly, it's a really fun car to drive, so it's worth it. But I'm no fanboy, so I will be the first to admit there are some problems with the car, be it the simple to more than a fault UI, or the subject of this video, the key fob. Now this may look pretty enough from the outside, but the experience of actually using it is pretty bad. The piano black finish gets totally scuffed up and covered in fingerprints. There's no way to actually mount this to a keychain, so I had to buy a case to actually be able to put it on my hip. And I feel like an asshole. You are an asshole. Thank you. Uh, I feel like an asshole just walking down the street with this giant thing swinging around with Tesla all on the bottom. It's just not really who I am. So all of this being said, I wanted a solution to my problem. Your first world problem. Yes. My admittedly very first world problem, but I wanted a solution. So I designed this. My take on a Tesla key fob is a little bit more slim and a little bit less ostentatious. Can I, can I see that? A little more me. Yeah, you wanna see it? Here you go. Look at that, I may have won someone over already. Now, if you're interested on in seeing the rest of it, both how I built it and how you can get your own, stick around till the end of the video. Before I could design a new one, I figured I would take a look at what the existing key looked like first. So I started tearing it down first by prying off this back plate, removing the battery, and then I used my spudger here with a little bit of effort to pop off the two sides. They come off relatively easily. Um, and from here, there's just four more small clips that hold on the top piece, hold it to the bottom there. And then we have our PCB. Nothing too crazy here, we're not gonna go too in depth, but you have your three buttons that we're gonna add our own tops to. And because I figured this would be a real pain in the ass to redesign, I decided to go ahead and harvest this battery uh, holster. Yeah, that sounds right. Anyway, took some measurements of the PCB here so I could go ahead and make a mock-up in Fusion 360. Now, as much as I was criticizing the design, they did at least poke yoke these buttons into the holes so you couldn't put the wrong one into the wrong hole. But enough praise, it was time to go ahead and create my own version. So I just went ahead and did a whole bunch of sketches, got some ideas out on paper, and we'll see what sticks. I took the night to sleep on it, but in the morning, I settled on my design, and that meant it was time to hop into Fusion 360. Sadly, it's not quite as easy as just pulling it off the screen, so uh, let's wind that back a little bit, see what really happened. As you can see, I have made my way through quite a number of prototypes in this project, but I think it's been worth it. Now, as lovely as this pile of parts does look, I figured I would go ahead and organize it a little bit just so we can uh, make sense of it. I think you'll, you'll appreciate that. When it's all laid out like this, I think you can see where most of my effort went. Definitely this top casing took up quite a bit of work. And then the buttons, I spent so long just trying to get the feel just right, the texture, the clickiness, all of that. Now since a lot of that prototype looking was pretty boring, I went ahead and skipped over it and I'll give you a high level overview here. So after modeling the PCB, the first thing I focused on was the top case. Not only did it have to hold all the components together, but it actually had to look good while doing it. All those iterations you saw went into getting these internal features just right for holding the PCB snugly and making sure the buttons were properly aligned. I ended up with two different versions of the buttons. All of them have these nice decals, which I thought were a little bit fun, but I also added a version of the middle button that was raised slightly so that way you can feel it without having to look down at the key. I added this detail ring purely for cosmetic reasons. I think it just adds a little bit of contrast. And that brings us to the spacer. Now the point of the spacer I'll get into a little more later, but essentially it makes this the buttons actually feel good, kind of important. And finally the back. Nothing too exciting here. It just holds it all together and gives it a way to actually mount it either onto your belt loop or through some sort of carabiner, whatever you'd like. Ta-da! <laughs> So now that you fully understand the design, and I'm sure you do, I'll show you how it actually goes together in person, starting with the backplate. First things first, we'll take that battery holster, still never decided on that, and drop it in over the pin. Then we'll take in our CR2032 battery, aligning the plus signs, and just drop it in there. You'll see this is a little hole, so you can easily pull it out if you need to. But putting it back in, we will move on to the front plate. So this is a little detail ring, uh, basically just slips on totally for cosmetic reasons, but eh, it looks okay. So we'll use a little bit of super glue and the end of a uh, zip tie here just to spread the glue around. So just a nice even bead, nothing too crazy. Um, just enough to hold on the detail ring. It's like a 10th of a, a millimeter, so there's really hardly anything there. Um, but just spreading it around with the zip tie, plop it on, make sure everything's lined up. 
and then that is more or less set to dry. I used some IPA just to clean off any excess, and this was a good chance to also clean my work table. Let that dry. And just to give things a final little press, I did a little bit of CPR here using this uh, cork board just to give some even pressure across the whole face. And if you don't have a cork board, you can probably also use the back of the key here. Just have to kind of wiggle it around a little bit, but you'll figure it out. And now that we have all those parts prepped, we can actually assemble it. So we'll take the front button here, which go in the top position, then the lock unlock button that goes right in the middle. And last but not least will be the trunk button that'll go right down at the bottom. Just fit into the holes there. Then we'll take our spacer and this will slot in right here. Now it's impossible to put this in backwards. You'll see it just won't fit. So this is that uh, pokey oak from before. We're just doing a little bit of mimicry. So we'll drop that in. Then we'll take the PCB and you want the buttons to be facing down. So it should just line up with the indents and you want this to be completely flush with the top surface of the printed part. Then we'll put on the back case. This basically drops in into a little slot and you're gonna slide it in this case to the left to lock it into place. There you go. It's a pretty slight motion. This will open up and allow you to drop in the screws that will hold everything together. To hold everything together using the belt loop here, you'll use two M2 by 16 screws, and that gives you your full assembly. But let's say you wanted to do it without the belt loop. We'll just reverse all that real quick. And in this case, you're instead gonna use two M2 by eight millimeter screws. So just cutting that in half and screws together just like so. Now here you can thread in whatever loop you want. In this case, I'm using this fake leather. Uh, just slips in like so, and then we use this thumb screw to secure it all together. And there you go. Not too shabby. So, in order to get the satisfying click... Ooh, I, oh shit, I just opened my car. <laughs> okay, this thing's got pretty good range. Good to know. When I'm talking about button feel, it's really broken up into two categories. There's the button itself, how deep the hole is, where the button head fits into, the general texture on the top, and then what I'm calling the button spacer. Now this is a component that I designed that would basically distribute the pressure when you push the button down over the entire area of the key, just gives you a better feel and makes it so that you're not getting weird behaviors in the corners of the button if you happen to hit up there. To actually decide on a button, I had to go through a whole bunch of trials. Here I was varying the different heights of the button inserts. So 0.3 millimeters, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and so on. All of these just to get exactly the right feel that I wanted. So in the end, I think I got through like 11 different versions of the spacer and God knows how many buttons, to be honest. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the final result. So with the design mostly stable, I decided it was time to do some proper testing. I went out and just used it every day for two or three weeks. And a big part of that testing was making sure it worked with all my outfits. And yes, I do mean all my outfits. <laughs> now with that very important testing done, all that was left was to push those buttons a whole bunch more times and make sure everything still felt good. Thankfully, the worst that was discovered in testing was an issue where there'd be a low battery warning that would pop up on the car. Turns out this was caused by the top case lifting up just a little bit, allowing the battery to slide and disengage from the contact. All I had to do to fix that was drop down the top wall just a little bit so there was no room for it to move at all. So all things considered, pretty easy fix. So there you have it. This is my Tesla key fob. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It has a nice look, it's unique, but not overly flashy and ostentatious, which is not what I wanted. So it turned out pretty good. I am making all of these model files available on my printables.com page, link down in the description. I'm also interested to know if you guys would want this as like a mod kit where you could order all the parts, um, have it shipped to you, and then you could just install it in your own Tesla key fob. So if that's something you're interested in and there's enough interest, I'll definitely put it together. Um, but just let me know down in the comments. Now, as I'm sure you've seen, there was quite a bit that went into this video. So if you did enjoy it, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps grow the channel and helps me make more cool videos and projects just like this. You're gonna see two videos popping up somewhere around here. Those are recommendations, so if you want to, go ahead and check them out. But if not, I will see you guys in the next one.